I think that there's a lot of outlets boxing provides. Even if you're just hitting the bag, it's pretty cathartic. And if you want to fight and you're goal oriented, there's that. So there's something for everyone within the sport. I think anyone who is looking to reconnect with their body should take up boxing. It takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of thinking, starting from the feet. You have to think about your balance. You have to think about how you're throwing your punches. You have to think about the person on the other side of the punches you're throwing, knowing when to exert yourself and when not to exert yourself. And to me, that just keeps me wanting to come back another day and train. My name is Max Adler. I'm 35 years old and my boxing gym is on track to bring in over $150,000 this year. I had no experience running a business before Outbox. About 10 years ago, I made the decision to just be a, a boxing coach and personal trainer because I was in the gym so much. I really just had tunnel vision for fighting. So the time that I wasn't fighting, I was making money working at gyms, but I loved it and I loved training people and I could box all day. There's probably maybe 100, 150 people that have actual memberships where they just come in and or class packs, but we have about five to 600 visitors a month. So right now we have about 18 classes a month, not including pop-ups and just special workshops. Our most popular class time and time again is just beginner boxing. So apart from our classes, we have personal training or we have other trainers doing personal training and we take a small percentage of that. Then we have trainers that have their own independent clients, but they pay a floor fee per client. Then we also have open gym folks. So they come in and they use a treadmill. They don't need training, they don't need anything. They're just paying to be here on their own. And then we sell merchandise and water and coconut water that makes a little bit of profit. Growing up, I was female. I didn't medically transition or even socially transition until I was about 30, 31 years old. So for a very long, for most of my life, I was female and I went by live. Once you're in your stance, your first basic punch is gonna be your jab. That's gonna be with your lead arm. You're gonna glue your other hand on defense, and then you're gonna extend your lead hand. I first started Outbox in about 2020, in the middle of the pandemic. First gyms were closed and I was working as a boxing coach throughout a couple gyms in the city. And once gyms closed, I had moved my clients to the park as many trainers did. I was working out of Brower Park. I was doing classes in the pier and I was working at Domino Park in Williamsburg. I had my backpack, I was going all over the place. Right before the pandemic happened, I hadn't transitioned yet. I was still competing in the female division. So transitioning was just something that would have kind of disrupted my life and my ability to compete and where I'd go with boxing. So I just put it out of my mind. But I started really reconnect or connecting with other trans and, and queer people. And I started giving them free boxing lessons at my gym. And that's the first time that I really was like, I don't feel like this is a, a safe spot for people to come in who are trans and non-binary because the second they walk in, they're getting misgendered, it's uncomfortable. People don't wanna change their clothes in the bathroom. People don't wanna talk to anyone else. So it was really, really important for me to have my facility completely non-gendered. Everything from the front desk experience to the bathroom to the language that the trainers use. In the background during the pandemic, one of my close friends was a woodworker. I was working with them um, just to make some extra cash in the wood shop, and they were looking for a big commercial space. And I was talking, they're also trans, I was talking to them, I'm like, I really think that I've got enough people to open up a gym, and I also truly believe there should be a gym for trans and queer people, because we have such different needs and language and stuff. They sent me, within a couple weeks, a commercial listing. It was a giant garage space that had previously been used as a martial arts gym. The second I opened the door, I was like, wow, I could immediately envision like where the ring would go. I just was like, I'm just gonna keep going forward with this because this seems like a pretty good opportunity. 
So the lease originally was $6,000 a month. We would split $3,000 each and it was first month and security deposit. So my down payment was six grand and then the first month, which was three grand. And we also negotiated two months free so we could set up the space. So I put down about nine grand total, which just came from my own personal savings. Honestly, in terms of starting a business, it was not that much money. We officially opened this location around October 21st, 2021. We signed the lease for October 1st and we were gonna build it out for two months, but it just took us three weeks to hang some bags and get everything going. And it really looked like an empty garage in here. Like when I look back at early photos, it looks like we're in a garage. But it didn't matter, people were showing up. Our first classes, October 21st, we announced we were doing classes all week. The first two were completely sold out. It was incredible to see, like people came out. We filled those classes pretty quickly and we were able to start generating revenue from the beginning to start buying more and more stuff. The first few months I learned a lot about hitting cost of business. So I calculated, okay, maybe the rent's $3,000 a month, but of course there's gonna be some hidden fees. We're paying $400 for insurance. But what we didn't know is that the utility bill would hit us with an extra $1,200, that I would be responsible for the taxes, that was an extra like four or $500. And then we had our insurance costs, and then the hidden costs just kept happening. So every month we would calculate our rent to be about 5,000 baseline, which was almost 40% more than we accounted for. Again, we didn't go into this having a business plan because within two weeks, I went from never having a business and doing classes in the park to a brick and mortar in central Williamsburg in Brooklyn. So things were happening very fast. I would say that we were averaging around 15,000 a month before we expanded. That was before we had open gym and personal trainers because we didn't have the equipment for it. Our last month, we just did our best month ever. I think we made about 18,500. Any money that I do make from the gym goes right back into the gym. So I still don't pay myself. I was working for many years making a lot more than my very, very cheap rent. And I saved a lot of money. And then I, um, during the pandemic, was getting, I had severance pay, unemployment, and I was still working part-time, multiple jobs. So I'm still actually living off my savings because any money I do make goes to the contractors and it goes right back into building the gym. My first thought with Outbox was just expanding, maybe franchising, whatever. But then I really started to think about more things I wanted to do, especially with trans folks. First of all, employing trans folks. Pre and post transition personal training and physical therapy. I would love to have more programs geared specifically for trans bodies and non-binary people and queer people that have like different physical and emotional needs than, than you know an average person going to a gym who's cis and straight. I also, as a fighter, have a bigger vision for getting trans people in the ring and participating in sports. Even if they don't compete or participate in a professional level, because right now, obviously in the media, it's a huge point of contention. People generally do not want to see trans people participating in sports, but just having trans and non-binary people participate at any level in, in sports and fitness. I mean, there have been some people that have come in and, and they've been like, this place has changed my life. I've never worked out before. And somebody was like, for the couple hours I'm here, it's the first time I'm not self-conscious about my gender and, and just who I am. I think it is so important to look around and see people that, that look like you and identify similar. I've seen couples meet here. I've seen business relationships form. I've had a lot of very proud moments and it's really just like seeing people connect with each other and, and feel normal.